It's great answer five applications of maths, 2019, paper one, question one. Helen makes and sells candles. These candles should be 22.5 centimeters tall. She rejects any candles that are at width this range plus or minus two millimeters of this height. Below the heights of 10 candles at chosen at random, calculate the percentage that she rejects. So the first thing we need to do is find the max and the min. So the max it can be is equal to 22.5 plus 2 millimetres, so 0 0.2 equals 22.7 centimetres. And the min is 22.5 minus 0 0.2, which is 22.3 centimetres. And that's a mark there. Next step, work out which ones are rejected. So anything below 22.3 or above 22.7. So that one's rejected, 22.6 is OT. 22.5 is okay, 22.9 is too big, 22.3 is okay, 21.6 is out, 22.6 is okay, 22.4 is okay, 22.7 is okay, 22.8 is out. So four are rejected. So rejected, we have got four out of ten. And out of ten, I need to make that a percent. You, you should know that's 40% because it's out of 100 is percent, that's 40, just times it by 10, or 40 percent. And we're done there. It's going to National Five Applications of Maths 2019, paper one, question two. Paul usually works 30 hours each week. He is paid time and a half for additional hours he works. His basic pay is £12.50. Last week, he worked 37 hours. Find his gross pay for that week. So his gross pay is the pay before you take any deductions off, so there's no deduction to take off, just his pay then. So first step, I know that 37 hours, so it usually works 30 hours a week, so I can do 30 times £12.50. Lots of ways to do that sum, but since 30 ends in zero, I can just do 10 times £12.50 first. That's 125, and then do 125 times 3. 3 times 5 is 15, carry 1. 3 twos is 6, and 1 is 7 and three ones is three. So we get 375 for one mark. If then worked an additional seven hours, because 37 hours, so I need to do seven times 12 pound 50 again, but it's time and a half, so it's 1.5. So seven times 12 pound 50, but first, that gives me seven nothings is nothing, seven fives is 35, seven twos is 14, 15, 16, 17, carry one. 7, 1, 7 plus 1 is 8. So I've got £87.50 times 1.5. Well, times it by 1.5, time and a half, is the same as just adding a half on. So if I work out a half of 87.50, maybe up the side, 87.50 divided by 2, 2 fours is 8, 2 threes is 6 with 1 left over, 2 sevens is 14 with 1 left over, 2 fives is 10, half of... 8750 is 4375, so that equals 8750 plus 4375. That's 5, that's 12, that's 11, that's 1213. We get 13125 as the extra for a mark. Calculating the total, we've got 375 plus 131.25. That is 6. 10, 3, 4, 5, 5, 0, 6, 25 for your final mark. To part B, Paul is buying a new TV, the advertised price is 825. He decides to use a payment plan. The total cost of the TV using the payment plan is 84580. And the payment are as follows. One fifth of the advertised price, eight monthly installments, and a final payment of £100. We have to calculate the monthly instalment. Let's do each bullet point in turn. First part one, one fifth of the advertised price, so of 825. So 825 divided by 5. 5 and 8 goes 1 with 3 left over. 5 sixes is 30 with 2 left over. 5 fives is 25. The deposit is 165 for a mark. So bullet point two, we've got 84580 as the Bill price with instalment plan. We're taking off the 165, but we've just worked out as a deposit. But remember, we've also got a final payment of 100, so that's 265 to take off to work out the monthly payments. So that gives me 80 here, 5 minus 5, 0. 
Four will to make seven and fourteen. Fourteen minus six is eight. Seven minus two is five. So it's five hundred eighty pound eighty left over, and I need to then divide that by eight. Eight sevens is fifty six, leaving two left over. Eight twos is sixteen, leaving four left over. Eight sixes is forty eight. And then we've got zero, so the monthly instalment is £72.60. And we're done there. SBA National 5 Applications of Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 3. The pie chart shows the number of hours overtime at 72 employees of a supermarket work during one month. Calculate how many employees worked 15 plus hours overtime. So let's have a look to see where that is. If we look at here, there's our 15 plus hours there. That represents 30 degrees. So we know that. 30 degrees out of the total 360 degrees of and it's 72 employees. So we'll try to do a sum like this. We might as well simplify the fraction to make it easier. So that equals taking the zeros off 3 out of 36 of 72. 3 into 36, well 3 goes into 36 12 times. So that's 112 of 72. So counting in 12s, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, 72 equals 6. 6 employees worked 15 plus hours overtime. For the probability that an employee chosen at random worked 9 or less hours. So 9 or less hours means this segment here and this segment here. So we've got 180 degrees, that's half of them. So we need to work out how many people that is. Half of 72 is 36. Now, we don't know how big this bit is, so we need to work that out. So let's add up all our angles that we've got. We've got 180, we've got 30, we've got 90. So that's leaving 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 3, 60 degrees this bit. Now, we've already worked out 30 degrees, that was 6 people. So if 30 degrees is 6 people, 60 degrees must be double that, so that's 12 people. So the total number of people... 36 plus 12 out of the total number in people in total, which is 72. So 36, 46, 48 out of 72 is our probability. But then we need to simplify all fractions. So let's half the numbers first, 24 and 36. Half them again, that's 12 and 18. Oh, I could keep halving, that is 6 and 9. And now I can't half, but 3 goes into both of them. 3 into 6 goes 2, 3 into 3 goes 9, 2 thirds is the probability. You could have got there quicker if you picked a different number to divide by. Jillian thinks that 24 degrees F is colder than minus 3 degrees C. A formula is shown. Determine if she is correct. So we just need to find these numbers on here. There's F on this side. So finding 24, well there's 20. And then it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's gone up in 2s. 22, 24. So let's mark 24 on this diagram. I'll make that nice and big. There's 24 degrees. F. Now we have to find minus 3 degrees C, which is this side. So again, there's 0, and we're going down the minuses. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's going down on 1s. So minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. There is minus 3 degrees C there. She thinks minus 24F is colder than minus 3. So it has to be below it. Is she correct? Yes. 24 degrees F is lower than 3 degrees C on the scale. Would be enough to get your mark. It's great enough to pile up because it's maths 2019, people won. Question 5. Alana takes out a loan of £4,500. The interest plus the administration fee is 7.5% of the loan. The total loan will be paid back in nine equal monthly payments. Calculate the monthly payment. So I need to add on 7.5% and then divide by 9. So let's start with 7.5% of 4,500. Now this is non calculator. So I always find it easier just to find 10% and then half and half again to get 2.5% and then take away. So in other words, 10% divided by 10 is 450. That means that 5% divided by 2 is 
225, which means 2.5% divided by 2 again is, well, 1, 1, half of 5 is 2.5 or 50. So that means that 7.5% is equal to either your 5 and plus your 2.5 or your 10 minus your 2.5. I think adding is easier. So 225 plus 112 pound 50 equals 50. 5 and 2 is 7. 2 and 1 is 3. 2 and 1 is 3. That is how much 7.5% is. So the total repayment that's equal to the loan amount, 4500 plus the 33750 That is zero on there. 7384. 483750 is the total. So, so far, we have got a mark for getting 33750 and a mark for realising that we had to add that on and then we'll get a mark for now dividing by 9. And then we'll get a mark for actually getting the answer correct. So don't worry if you can't do it all. You can still get marks while you're working, okay? So the last bit, I do 4, 8, 3, 7. Point 50 divided by 9. So 9 times table. 9 fours is... 9 ones is 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. That's 5 with 3 left over. Start again. 9, 18, 27 is 3. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 6 left over. Uh, 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63 makes 7. 64, 65, 66, 7 leaves 4. 9, 18, 27, 36, 45 is 5. And then a 0. So the answer is 5, 3, 7, 50 per month. And we're done there. Green National Fire Up Case of Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 6. Write the following values and orders from biggest to smallest, greatest to least. Justify your answer. By justifying your answer, it means make them all the same so you can tell instead of just guessing. Okay? So we've got decimals, fractions, and percentages. I think the easiest way to do this is to change them all to decimals. So if you try to change them all to fractions, you need to make them the same denominator. So let's have a look at our decimals. We've got 0 0.388 first, then we've got 3 eighths. So that means we've got 3 divided by 8. 8 does not go into 3. So to deal with that, I add some zeros on here. Doesn't matter how many, just a bunch. So I can keep carrying if I have to. 3 left over. 8, 16, 24. That makes 3. 6 left over. 8, 5 is 40. 6 is 48. 7 is 56. 4 left over. 8 fives is 40. And then I'm done because there's no left over. So 3 eighths is 0 0.375. Now we've got a percent, 38.38%. To change that to a decimal, we just divide by 100. 38.38 divided by 100. To divide by 100, you just imagine where the point is and it's just going to jump back. All the numbers move. So 0.3838. So now putting them in order from biggest to smallest. The biggest one I've got is 0.39 still. And then we've got 388 or 383. 388 is next. And then I've got 383 and 375. Well, that's 383 then. And then 0.375. So changing them all back to the way it was, that was 0 0.39, 0 0.388, 38.38%, and the last one was 3 eighths, and we're done there. So 5, Applications of Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 7. And then I'm going to close the number of passengers who fail to turn to a flight each month. The numbers of 2017 are these. Calculate the median, lower quartile, upper quartile. So put the numbers in order, find the middle, and then find your lower and upper quartile. So let's put them in order. You've got 14, then we've got 17, then we've got 20 and 20, 
Then I can see 23, 25. Then I can see 27, 29. Then I've got 32, 38. And then I've got 43, 49. And I've marked them all off, so I'm done there. So find the middle, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. A half of 12 is 6, so it's about the sixth number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But if I was good to go there, you should see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 either side as well. So it's in the middle of there. So there's my median there, which is between 25 and 27, which is 26. And if you want to show about that, just add them up and divide by 2. I now want the middle of the first half up to the median, so all these numbers. So that's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And the middle of 20 and 20, that's just 20. And then 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And the middle of these two, 32 and 38. Well, 38 plus 2 is 40. 40 plus 30 is 70. A half of that's 35. So we can now just write our lower quartile as 20. Our median is 26, and our upper quartile is 35. Shot the box plot for this data. For a box plot, you need five things. You need the lower quartile, median, and upper quartile, and you just start and end numbers. So your lowest number is this number here, which is 14, and your biggest number is 29. You need to be as accurate as you can. So these boxes help. This goes up in ones. So I can just count to 14. So there's 10. 11, 12, 13, 14 is going to be here. So that's where I'm starting my little box at 14. And then our biggest number is 49. So there's 50. So there's 49 there. And now we go to our lower quartile, which is 20. So we draw a long stopping at 20. And you'd use a ruler for this. I can get a straight line just by doing that. And then our median is 26, but our upper quartile is 35. So we need to go to 35. So there's 35 there. So I'll kind of just draw that box in. And the box here between the lower and upper quartiles. Nice and neat. Making sure everything fits. We need to show the median, which was 26. So there's 25. So 26, there's our median. And then we connect up to our end point. So there we go. So there's our lowest number. There's quarter one, the median. Quarter three or upper quartile, and then the highest number. Ah, we're done there. Calculate the interquartile range. So the interquartile range, remember, it's just the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. 35 minus 20 equals 15. In 2016, the interquartile range for the number of passengers who failed to turn to our flights was 17. Make a comment comparing the number of passengers who failed to turn to our flights in both of these years, which was 2017 for this number. So we got in 2017, the interquartile range was 15, and they've got an interquartile range bigger than that. So that means that the number of passengers that failed to turn up in 2016, I'm just looking at a bigger number, was more varied as the key thing you are trying to look for. More varied if the interquartile range is bigger, less varied if the interquartile range is smaller. This way, that's five up because the maths 19, paper one, question eight. Sales driveway is sloped as shown, cross section driveway is in shape of a right angle triangle. The base is four meters long and makes an angle of 12 degrees. As shown, construct a scale drawing of the cross section of the driveway. So a scale drawing needs a ruler and a protractor. Uh, four metres, but it says use a scale of one centimetre, 0 0.5 metres. So 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5 and so on. Makes an eight centimetre drawing I need, plus a 12 degree angle. So I'll just take a note of that. I need to draw eight centimetres and 12 degrees. 
So let's get our ruler first of all. So here's my ruler. Now your ruler starts at zero and you go along to eight, sure you're accurate. Let's get a zero there. And we draw a nice eight centimeter line. Get as close as we possibly can to that end. And there we are, eight centimeters. Let's get rid of that ruler. Now we need a protractor to draw the 12 degree angle. So I've already got a picture of a protractor here I can use. So going to the end of my line, making sure the middle lines up. It's going through the zero. So there's my protractor. <clears throat> now notice when I'm using my protractor here that it's going through the middle zero. So this is me going up here. And I want 12 degrees. So I've got 10 degrees and then an extra one, two. So putting that in 10, 11, 12, there's 12 degrees there. So I make a little mark with my pencil and get rid of my protractor. So line my ruler up through the mark in the end of my line. I just draw a nice big straight line, even go past if I have to. And then we're going to join up the end vertically up here. Now I can get vertically with my protract my ruler just by turning it around. But we'll make sure we're joined up, get it nice and neat, and there we get our straight line. And you can obviously then delete any of the extra lines that you don't need. But essentially there is our scale drawn. We can mark on that's 12 degrees and that, that would be 8 centimetres which is equal to 4 metres. And we've got our right angle here. But B says use a scale drawn to calculate the gradient. So gradient, remember from the start of the exam paper, is vertical over horizontal. So I need to get my ruler again and measure the vertical length. So I need to measure the length of my line. So making sure that that's vertical. I've got it on the zero. 1.5, 1.6, about 1.7 centimetres there. 1.7 centimetres, obviously much easier to do on a bit of paper rather than using electronic tools. But that means that our gradient is 1.7 over 4. Sorry, 1.7 over 8. Which, we can't leave it as a 1.7 over 8, so times both by 10 to get 17 over 80. The gradient, so it's 17 over 80. And we're done there. Next week, National Five Math, Application of Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 9. After meeting in Beijing, Jennifer flies home to London via Amsterdam. The plane leaves Beijing on the 3rd of February 12.15. Let's take a note of that. Beijing, 3rd Feb at 12.15, local time. It then goes to Amsterdam and it arrives at Amsterdam on the 3rd of February as well. This time it's at 1800 local time. Now, it then says Beijing is seven hours ahead of Amsterdam. So if Beijing is seven hours ahead of Amsterdam, that means that Amsterdam is seven hours behind. So I need to add seven extra hours onto Amsterdam to get it into the same time frame as Beijing. So I need to add seven hours. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So 25, I'm going to the next day. So let's start that again. 18, 19, 20. 1, 22, 23, 0, 1. So that is 0, 100 hours. And that will be on the 4th of February because it's the next day. So what's the difference between these two times now? So 12, 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Another 12 hours is 12, 15 plus 45 minutes. It's 12 hours, 45. And we're done there. On landing in Amsterdam, Jennifer's phone call phone tells of the time and date in the following cities. Amsterdam, London and Miami. Jennifer plans to telephone her brother as soon as she gets home. She will arrive at her home in London at 23.15 local time. 
Her brother lives in Miami and arrives home from work at 1700 local time. Tell me whether her brother will be home from work when Jennifer makes the call. So Jennifer's making the call at 2115 local time. So we need to work out the difference in time between London, where she's calling from, and Miami, where she's calling to. So the difference in these two times. Well, that is 17, 12, 30 point times 6, 17, minus 5 hours. So when she makes a call at 23.15, it's minus 5 hours in Miami. So that's 23, 22, 21, 2019, 18, 15. Miami time. It says that he gets home from luck at 1700. Yes, he will be home. 1815 is later than 1700. I went on there. Next question, National 5 up is a Maths 2019 paper 1 question 10. A basic cookie dough mix requires butter, sugar, flour and chocolate chips. One sixth is butter, one third is sugar, one quarter is chocolate chips. The rest is flour. What fraction is flour? So I need to add up all the fractions, then take away from one. So let's start by writing down the sum we're going to do. A sixth plus a third plus a quarter. Now three fractions to add up, so just add out two of them, then add the third at the end. So we've got one sixth plus a third, well a third is two sixths, because double three is two, and that's plus a quarter. So that's a sixth plus a two sixths is three sixths plus a quarter. But you might as well simplify the three sixths to a half. A half plus a quarter, and a half is two quarters, Two quarters plus one quarter equals three quarters. So now the rest is flour. So the amount of it is flour. Three quarters means I've got a quarter left over. One quarter is flour. And we're done there. Next question, National 5 Applications of Maths 2019. Paper 1, question 11. Mary gave some money to four of her nieces. It was shared in proportion to their ages. It says Jane's 4, Tevers 11, Laura's 9, Kate is 6. Kate's share is 1950. Calculate the total Mary gave to her nieces. So where is Kate in the table? Kate is here and she got 1950. So that means it's six is six equals or years, six years equals 1950 pounds. So we can work out what one person would one year would be worth divided by six. So we do 1950. Divided by 6, 6 threes is 18, carry 1, 6 twos is 12, carry 3, 6 fives is 30. So one, if you were aged 1, you would get £325. So now we can work out how much the total is. So if we add up all the ages, total ages, or you could just work out each individual person's share of it, I think this is easier. Is 4 plus 11 plus 9 plus 6. That's 20, 30. So that means that in total we've got 30 times 325. So using that strategy we used earlier in the paper, we can do 3 times 10 times 325. 3 times 10 is 30, remember. That's 3 times 3250. 3 times nothing is nothing, 3 fives is 15, carry 1, 3 twos is 6 plus 1 is 7, and 3 threes is 9. She gave out 9,750. And we're done there. SQA National 5 Application of Maths 2019, Paper 1, Question 12. Kieran and Gemma have each set themselves a monthly electricity allowance. Kieran set himself an allowance of £42, Gemma £49. At the end of July, the smart meters recorded that Kieran has used £15, Gemma has used £21. Determine if we use the greater proportion of their allowance. So a bit of proportion just seems to be a fraction, really. So let's look at Kieran. He's used 15 out of 42. Whereas Gemma, she's used 21 out of 49. So we're trying to compare two fractions. The only way to compare two fractions is to make the denominators the same or change the decimals. So let's see if we can make these denominators the same by simplifying. If we look at Kieran's side, 3 goes into 15, 5 times. 
and 3 goes into 42, well, I've got 1 with 1 left over, and 3 fours is 12. So Kieran is 5 out of 14. Looking at Gemma's simplification, well, 7 goes into both of the numbers. 7 threes is 21, and 7 sevens is 49. So we're getting somewhere, but we're not quite the same yet. But luckily, 7, double that, you get 14. So I can now change Gemma's to 6 14s, and now it's easy. Gemma has used a greater proportion. Since 6 out of 14 is bigger than 5 out of 14. And we're done there. It's great, National 5 Applications of Maths, 19 paper, 1 question, 13. Joe has a business meeting in London. He travelled from home to meet his meeting by car. He arrived at his meeting at 11.45. He travelled 220 miles to his meeting at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. During his journey, he stopped for half an hour. Calculate the time he left home. So it's a distance speed time question. So we need to work out the time he was driving for. So the distance is equal to 220. The speed he was travelling at is 50 miles per hour. Now that's miles as well. So we need to work out the time. Now one simple way to remember these is you've got a D, S and T in a triangle, that's times. And you just cover up the one you're looking for. So if I was to cover up the time here, it says D over S. D divided by S. 220 divided by 50. So 220 divided by 50, well that equals the same as 22 divided by 5. 5 fours is 20. Carry 2. 5 fours is 20 again. So 4.4 hours. Now 4.4 hours is quite useless to us. We need to know hours and minutes. So 4.4 hours that equals four hours plus, well, I've got 0 0.4 of an hour left over. Well, 60 minutes of an hour, so I did 0 0.4 times 60. So that's four hours plus, four times six is 24. 24 minutes. Now let's just work out what's happened then. So we've got, he arrived at 11.45, he traveled, 4 hours 24 minutes, and his journey time was half an hour. So total travel is equal to 4 hours and 54 minutes. So let's, let's start off by working backwards then. He was at 11.45. So if I take away 45 men, I'm now at 11. 45 to 54 men is 9 men, so I need to take away another 9 men. That equals a uh, 10 and 49, 51, sorry. So I'm now on 10, 51, take away the four hours, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 51. So in 24 hour time, 0651. And we're done there.